The question is, do these national and regional institutions have that, you know, reach and depth to, for, for effective watershed management? They may have it in legal terms, they may have it in name, but does it actually exist? You cannot always say that only bottom up will work or only uh, top down will work. We have to go to this combination, top down and bottom up a good combination, you always can challenge how you can ensure it. It can ensure through this kind of dialogue. I think from my experience, there's very little rain that actually does hit the ground. And uh, I think that says a little bit about the, the top-down approach. It's, uh, it's not always as efficient as we would like it to be uh, in terms of policy. And uh, in, in terms of watershed management, I think um, one of the problems is enforcement. Um, this has been the problem not just uh, uh, for um, where I'm working in Laos, but I think in, in the region in general, there's a lot of good policy out there, but there's very little uh, put into practice. Actually, the, the institution involved in watershed management is we try to convince we are not the competitor. We should, the, should be the partner. The partnership should be established, whether the, the government agencies with the local authority, but in reality, the competition occur inside. For what? For budget. Dara Jam from Cambodia. We all hear about the formal and informal institution, and then we hear about the budget, financial resource to support both things together, to work together. But the point is that we are not talking about the mechanism, how to make both institutions work together. And we don't hear about the clear mandate and the responsibility of the two institutions. If local institutions don't work after a while, it is ultimately governments that are going to be holding the baby. It's a very strong point that's come out. Another point that you mentioned that is we, we still not uh, answer about integration. But I just want to show the uh, example in Cambodia where the area that uh, I'm, I'm working with the World Set Management Committee in Siemria province, that the, we try to integrate World Set Management issue into the, uh, we call, uh, sub-national planning at the uh, ground level. Flood warning information, that exists. But now you, you talked about integrated watershed management. Uh, if you say integrated, so I, I think that we need some organization who look at the same time, two irrigation, two water supply, two flood control, two forests, so that do not exist yet. The financial resource is generated from the natural resource. So if we allocate this resource for the local people to manage and they generate the resource, they also can manage the water set in the sustainable way. There is no such thing as the local anymore. A community on a river is connected to all the communities upstream and downstream, whether or not this crosses over an international boundary or otherwise. We are all connected into a global community. And what a community on one place in a river does affects hundreds of other people and communities. And it doesn't make sense to me, under those circumstances, that communities are allowed to drive the agenda. I have a question. Whether we have a plan for development first, or whether we have a plan to, for the exploitation first? Uh, this is also the question. Before we are touching the resource in which the people or the local uh, people depend for their daily life. I think that local institutions, you know, uh, they're still pretty strong but they're not sufficient. They're not sufficient, and uh, we government, we're not sufficient either. So we have to learn from uh, one another. So this is the case of Laos, which is among, uh, let's say, the countries in the region, I think the least uh, developed, but least development help us also to learn from the 
uh, local institution. Thank you. We agree that there shouldn't be any too much hand on on something that actually can be properly managed, administered by the local. But there must be some kind of common blueprint in form of national plan, form of national law and policy. But I also agree with some of our participants that sometimes law and policy fail to reflect the local reality. Well, Andrew, would you come here? You're going to summarize, and uh, we'll be closing the session. Uh, we asked our panelists uh, to take a devil's advocate position, a position that they necessarily do not subscribe to. Uh, they've done that. Uh, I was hoping they would be devils themselves, but they've been saints. Uh, so Andrew is going to try to summarize all this. But the critical questions for me that emerge through this discussion are how do we ensure that some of the rain or even most of the rain hits the ground? and when it does, that it makes the right things grow in a productive way. As the world becomes more connected, as governance becomes more challenging, so does our ability to learn from each other. The very technologies that are making the world smaller and making everything more connected are also the technologies that we can use to learn faster, to share faster, to grow uh, in smarter ways. As an old mentor of mine, uh, uh, the late Peter Cullen said, um, it's okay to make mistakes, but at least we should be making new mistakes.